This mission takes us uh, here in London, and then uh, Paris, Norway, New Zealand, um, and at the end of the film we go to Abu Dhabi. On a real action movie like this, the, you can never replicate the exterior lighting and the depth of field you get shooting in real locations, real cities, rather than backdrops and green screen visual effects backdrops. Um, it's just gritty, and you can't get that, on, you can't pretend on a stage to get that. The only way you can really do it is interaction. Um, so I think it's super important uh, on these type of action movies to go to real locations, especially with Tom Cruise. Uh, he, he doesn't want to, you know, sit in a green screen and imagine it's hot and dusty and he wants real interaction and he wants to feel the heat and feel the dirt and, you know, really get, a, you know, get to uh, grips with it. And I think it's super important. It comes out in the film. You can tell when something's uh, been cheated. And the one thing that Tom definitely does not want to do is cheat an audience. Um, he has fun making movies. And making movies is about being on cool locations and you know the, the, the logistical nightmares that you get, but then the reward that you get at the end of it, um, both with character and story, you know, as, as well as the end result in the film. So I think it's super important for a movie like Mission um, and Tom, that we, we keep it real. Safety is a big thing for Tom. It's a massive thing, obviously, for me. My responsibility is, um, is him and everyone else and all my team. Um, but Tom, being such an athlete, is aware of what it takes to do what he's about to do. He trusts in myself and my team uh, on the action front, and uh, we always make sure that we can give a spectacle of action but keep it very safe, not, not just for the performers and for Tom, but all those around. Um, and that's just through experience and do, doing it a lot. So I think Tom and I work really well together on that. There's a, there's a process, a very disciplined process um, from my side um, and from Tom's side. He wants to, uh, you know, he trusts in, in what we do um, and he applies it and he does it in a very professional manner. Tom's been doing a lot of wind tunnel training, which is exhausting. He does his normal fitness regime, which keeps him on track. Uh, we've been doing our normal uh, drift training in cars, uh, a lot of motorbike training, drift training on bikes too, uh, helicopter flying. Uh, he became a, you know, a, a really good and very proficient pilot on this movie, helicopter pilot. He was always a fixed wing pilot before that. But uh, he now has his uh, rotor license, commercial rotor license, and um, flew everything in the sequences himself, and in incredible sequences, and some really hairy flying in some of the most treacherous regions of New Zealand. And, you know, alpine mountain flying is some of the most dangerous flying you can do. The motorcycle chase in Paris was nerve wracking. Uh, nerve wracking for many reasons, the main one being that Tom was riding a motorbike on the streets without a helmet. Um, and there's only so much protection and help you can give, and then it's really down to him. Tom's very safety conscious, obviously, and he's not stupid, he doesn't want to hurt himself. Uh, it took a lot of planning for me with cars and all, around, all the people around him, whether on a car, on a motorbike, walking. He was surrounded by stunt people in every sequence. The Arc de Triomphe morning, um, again, nerve-wracking because Tom was on a motorbike without a helmet riding on sort of, you know, slippery surface at times. And to be able to close the Arc de Triomphe, I mean, it's, it was incredible. I'll never forget watching the sunrise of the Arc de Triomphe and thinking that all those cars in there were stunt guys in it. So yeah, we had three lanes or four lanes of traffic, stunt guys all doing this sort of, this different spacing all going around. I'd have to cue them in different times so that we could pick certain paths where Tom would come weaving through on the bike. But we had an hour for the Arc de Triomphe. So it wasn't a case of, okay, we'll stop here, we'll cut here, we'll take a break. I basically had everyone in the car get hydrated, go to the toilet, because for the next hour you're driving in a circle around the Arc de Triomphe. There's no brakes. And that's the only way we could do it, as they just kept driving. Well, we changed film and talked about shots. The guys were still going around and around. No one stopped. And then we just kept that loop going. And we had certain key cars where basically you're watching around about and in you go and in you enter. And once you're in it, you're in it. So good luck. The fights in Mission are always, um, always interesting because we've got these different characters, so we can, you know, we can create different styles. So we can create the Ilsa style and um, keep going on the Ethan style and make it 2.0. 
Um, and then again, the different characters, Henry Cavill's brand new, um, developing a style for him and working with him to see his strengths and weaknesses, which um, was great fun. As I said, he's an amazingly talented athlete and actor. So that was, um, that was always great fun when you see someone's you know, talent and you can really sort of go in there, especially when they want to work really hard. Um, then you can really get the best out of them. And then with Sean Harris, uh, our lane character, again, it was finding a style that really suited him and then seeing him enjoy that style and then put his character into it. And then the whole style changed. Um, and Simon Pegg with Benji, I mean, he's just so much fun to work with, period. So doing anything with him is just a laugh and good fun. And he works really hard too. As Tom always says, it's not mission possible. Um, it really is quite impossible sometimes. And, um, but then the end goal is, is always great, you know? So it's like the audience go on the grueling adventure with us. There's so much action in this movie, it's ridiculous. It's nonstop. And uh, I think we're, I don't know what day we're on at the moment, it just, they all blend, but we are, there is so much action in this movie, and it's like so, such a diverse amount of action. I mean, God, we're in helicopters, boats, trucks, bikes, cars, mountains. I mean, we've got virtually everything you can do action-wise, skydiving, anything you can do in the world, pretty much, we're doing in this movie. Um, and it's still growing, it just keeps going. And it's fun. The stuff we're doing is fun. So I think people can expect to have a fun experience watching this. In this movie, uh, I think the audience is going to have a lot of fun because we are doing pretty much everything you can do in, in life in this movie. We are crashing and driving trucks, cars, boats, motorbikes. We're skydiving. We're helicopter flying. We're falling. We're fighting. Um, I'm losing track. We've got so much action in this movie. I, I don't know if there's any room to fit any more in, but we're doing just about everything you've Every action movie you've seen action in, we're basically doing all of it in this movie. Uh, so it's, uh, it's very intense. And on this mission, it, was, it started off with five big pieces of action that were gonna be amazing. And that turned into 10 big pieces of action and five smaller pieces of action, and it just keeps growing. So I think we're topping all other missions with this one purely based on, we have so much stuff in it. There's not one big sequence that we're going to remember. There's so many big sequences in this movie. It's, uh, it's just a massive action movie, just massive. So, um, and it's real. So I, I think the, it being so real and so big and such sort of you know, high adrenaline rush of action, I think it, it tops all the other missions based on that alone.